What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Pascal. Welcome to The Pascal Show. Listen, guys, I want to say first off, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out this interview. Just one quick heads up. This interview was done a few weeks back, okay, before things changed with the presidential election, okay, for the president, the, the election race, okay? So I just want to let you know that. But I do think that what she has to say about this year's upcoming election is timeless. I think she has a lot to say. So just wanted to give you guys that heads up. Enjoy the interview with the legendary Jennifer Lewis. Well, guys, I am here back again for round two of our conversation with the vivacious Jennifer Lewis. What is up? How you doing? Hey, you guys baby. can make some noise. It's okay. Hi, hi, yes. hi, hi, hi. Hi, how you been? I'm good. I, you know, had a fall in Africa. Yes. And I have rehabbed. I think I'm about, I guess, 85% back. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I just saw you on uh wasn't it maybe the masked singer or or no um, uh, well, uh, well American no, Idol on and the you mask, were doing high kicks no, and everything. No, 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 but it was the masked singer first. Ah, and okay. when I did the masked singer, I was still in bed. And they literally, if you look at that uh, video, they bolted me to the floor because I couldn't walk then. They had that cape around me as Cleopatra. <laughs> My friends wanted me to get out of bed because right. uh, I'd been in bed at that time about, whoa, maybe seven months, and I was still in a lot of pain. Right. So to do the mass thing, I took a little bit more uh, morphine. Uh, and if you look closely, when Nick Cannon is talking, mm. you can see that big hat, that big cat head go, what can I tell you? I mean, but they bolted me. A hell to, of a drug. <laughs> they they put me in a harness yeah. and bolted me to the floor. And that first song, "Stormy Weather," you didn't see me move my feet because mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. And the second song, the mic stand was bolted to the floor, so I could uh, do some little kicks, you know, yeah. and all of that. But I had. I'm glad I got up and did it, though it was painful because I was on the walker still. And then uh, they asked me to do American Idol to help promote the ride of Princess and the Frog, Tiana's mm -hmm. Great Adventure at Disney World and Disneyland. Um, there's a ride and Mama Odi, the character I played, has an animatronic and I swear to you, it looks real. So when I saw my voice coming out of That's her dope. voice, it blew my mind. Yeah. And I have to tell you, when I was driving home, after I saw the animatronic, I said out loud in my car, because, listen, I didn't want to die on the ground of the Serengeti. Yeah. But I would have been all right if I had. Hmm. Can we Why is that? Because I'd lived. Not scared of death anymore. And you've always been walking in your joy, right? You better believe that. That's my one. second book, Walking in My Joy. <laughs> one hell of and a book. And you know, look, I'm back from the fall. I'm back better. Mm -hmm. You're going to either give up after something like that, or you're going to work hard and come back better. One thing you learn, life is precious. No doubt. And it's short. Mm -hmm. So tell me, let's talk about that. What happened? You had a near fatal accident in Tanzania, if I'm correct. And then you, you yeah, literally was, had to learn how to walk again or oh something yes. like that. I so couldn't, yeah. what happened? All right. So I'm walking on the deck of my hotel. I'm mm -hmm. walking. I'm not drunk. I'm not high. Everybody, somebody put in the comment, were you drunk, auntie? A uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was not. It was an unsafe deck. And there was a space where you could actually just fall mm. and, um, it was pitch black out in the savannah. There was a little light on the deck where had there been a sign, I would have seen it. What can I tell you? The safety rules are different over there. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? So I fell unbeknownst, I didn't even know I was falling, uh, 10 feet wow. into wild animals. Oh, wild animals? Baby. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
there was a Cape Buffalo 10 feet from me, but I didn't know it because it was pitch black. I didn't know I'd fallen into wild animals until I heard a lion roar. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the lion came over, I said, oh, you lion, lion. <laughs> Get it? Right. You lion, lion, I'm the truth. <laughs> I got these jokes, it's so stupid. But yeah, I fractured my acetabulum. I fell 10 feet. My right buttocks took the impact. Mm. So when my right buttocks hit this concrete, yeah. the femur bone, and baby, you don't want to move a femur bone. Wow. <laughs> no, it was very painful. I couldn't move. I was able to wake up my girlfriend. She ran for help, and when she went for help, that was when I heard the lion roar. Wow. And my, I told Robin Roberts this on Good Morning America. My first thought when I knew it was over was what a headline. <laughs> the king ate the queen. It just, it's just ridiculous. I right, mean, right. who even has this story? But... Um, the Maasai warriors came and retrieved me. It was very painful. Doctors Without Borders, a great organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mention this because it's important. They sent in a helicopter to air vac me from Tanzania to Kenya. I had just given, I haven't said this in any interview, but I had just given Doctors Without Borders an enormous donation at the height of COVID. Mm. Mm. So for them to show up in the Serengeti, and air vac me out of a pit of wild animals. Yeah. Fly me to Nairobi. Mm. Stay with me through a nine hour surgery, six days in ICU. I'm telling you, one of those doctors came every day to the hospital. So you had one hell of a 2023, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what was it like getting back on your feet? Well, listen, I've been telling everybody, I'm an alpha female. I've always been a positive person. Look, I got to do what I love to do with my life. Yeah. Um, what's there to complain about? When I had trials and tribulations and traumas happen in my life, uh, great challenges to work through mental illness. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 33 years old. Um, I was uh, molested by the pastor of my church. Mm -hmm. You know, I came through the fire, and that's just a few things. Yeah. Um, many near-death experiences. I nearly drowned in the Pacific Ocean. The lifeguard mm. had to come, pump the water, mouth to mouth. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've lived a very adventurous life, yeah. and I've taken a lot of risk. Would I, do I regret any of it? Absolutely not, because it's made me who I am sitting here right now. I'm very happy in my life. Everybody's asking me, which do you have more appreciation for? The star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or the star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Right. Equal. One gave me my beginnings, molded me, made me who I am. And now the Hollywood Walk of Fame is who I am. What I became. Right. So equal. Which by the way, congratulations on both. 
Thank you. Huge. That's, that's some amazing no, it's, stuff. it's wonderful. I mean, and I tell people, what is my success? After 68 movies, over 600 episodic television shows, four Broadway shows, concert all, concerts on, what, six continents. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, after all of that, what is my real success besides going to therapy and getting myself back in my skin in order to uh, enjoy the fruits of my labor? Mm -hmm. My greatest success whew, is I have a smile on my face. And I am truly happy with my life, in my life, 95% of the time. What's the trick? How do you do, do it? The, do the work. Do the work. What is the work? Right. Journal. Mm. What is the work? Meditate. What do you want? Who are you? What's your passion? Oh, Ms. Lewis, how do I find my passion? What makes you happy? Find a way to get yourself out of those dark rooms. Mm -hmm. Believe in life. What are we as human beings? We want more, more, more of everything. More wisdom, more money, more grace, more love, more. So you have to ask yourself, what do I want more of? What makes me feel good? Right. There are two emotions. There's only two. You feel good about the decision you made or you feel bad. Right. And what are we? What's the glory of being alive? Choice. Choose. Is it easy? I didn't say it was easy, but we were not promised a rose garden without thorns. Mm -hmm. Our job is to navigate that. Mm. No doubt. And learn to appreciate life. Realize how precious it is. Life, being alive, and when you've literally taken your head out of the lion's mouth. <laughs> I assure you, you learn how precious life is. When they brought me down to the gym for my first physical therapy session in Nairobi. Hmm. Were you mentally prepared for that? Hmm. The young African man said to me on the parallel bars that you assist you walking, he said, Mom, come, you must walk here now. You must walk here, walk. I couldn't remember how. Wow. I was staring up at the molding of this very high ceiling in a gym, a place I'm very familiar with, the gym. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't remember how to move the body to walk. So it was the first time I cried. Okay. I sat down in the wheelchair and said these words to myself. You'll get up and you'll walk. I'll kill you myself. Mm. Now get. And it was at that moment that I realized how far away from home I was. Mm -hmm. How far away from St. Louis, from Kenlock, from my family. And I knew I had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there to help me. Oof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now get the fuck up. Yeah. Oh, the great Jennifer Lewis. 
now. You will walk. And like I told Robin Roberts <laughs> on Good Morning America, it was at that point that I realized, I kept saying to myself, how can you be in this much pain and be alive? But I did it. And you got through it. I walked all the way to the end. Now I wanna share something with you that I haven't told anyone. Oh, okay. Please mm. share. My family wasn't there to get me down those parallel bars. Mm -hmm. Lori, my friend who saved my life, who I was traveling with, she was up doing something medical for my records business. So there was no one that I knew in that gym. Right. I called on Mandela. I called Harriet, I called Frederick, I called Rosa and Obama, King. And I said, I'm gonna need help. And I say to all of you, when you can't go any further, call on your ancestors. See, God was already there. But when you need a little extra, mm -hmm. call them. Call them. Well, the strength from all the people that you summoned, all that energy, all that positive energy, I mean, you were able to bounce back. I mean, like I said, I was seeing you on all these shows, uh, yeah. American Idol, yeah. high kicking. I'm like, whoa, now the, she just fell, didn't she? And the, <laughs> now the, she's high kicking. The American Idol performance yeah. was my comeback. It was phenomenal. Oh my God, I couldn't believe I was praying. I didn't even look at Lionel Richie because I was like, Lionel, don't let me fall. Don't let me fall. Don't <laughs> let me fall, Lionel. Um, and when I got to American Idol rehearsal, the little, the sweet little choreographer. She said, Miss Lewis, I want you to come over here and then you'll go over there. I looked at that little girl. I said, honey, maybe you haven't heard. <laughs> yeah. I had a fall in Africa. I'm not going anywhere, but I did it. And I amazing. had fun doing it and I didn't know how not to do it. You look like, so, you look like it was just any other day. And when I kicked my maybe. leg up, mm -hmm. that's when I wanted to tell the world the bitch is back, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I did it. I worked hard. Yeah. Boom, and there it is. Yeah. It was. Boom. It was amazing. High kick. Yeah. I, now it ain't as high as it was, but it's up there. Hey, it was. Uh, hey, I can't do it. <laughs> and I saw Ryan Seacrest tried to do it. He almost yeah, split yeah. his pants. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Absolutely. So uh, it was amazing and to Karen, see that. I uh, want to mention. Um, the saxophonist that played with me, Terrence Blanchard, oh, yeah. was brilliant. I loved working with him. What a wonderful man. Yeah, talented uh, Beautiful musician. human being, yes. Yeah. Um, so all of the things that I've been able to do since I got out of bed, yeah. oh my God, so many. I don't believe, I'm getting ready to take a break. I'm sick of all of y'all now. Because I was just going to say, I was just going to say, wait I'm a second. I'm going back into intense physical therapy after the star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Okay. I have had it between Disneyland, between, <laughs> uh, okay, so I've gone from Orlando yeah. to New York. I yeah. just did an episode of the reboot of Sex in the City. I oh, went wow. to Canada and did a show called So Help Me Todd. It's been canceled, mm -hmm. but the, the, uh, the episode is uh, on YouTube somewhere. Right. Um, I've done it. I did the Upshaws. I did Night Court. People want me now. Yeah. I just, I just turned down a series. I never oh, thought I'd do no. Wow. It was too much. But it, I was, it was too much to go to work after Blackish this soon. Uh, I get it. But I also heard that you were going to retire. But that was right before the accident, right? 
and then this accident kind of snap you back into reality saying I, like, I still want to keep working. Look, I kind of think God said, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Now I have molded her 65 years because I was 65 when I fell. I'm 67 mm. now. I have molded her 65 years and she thinks she's going to go back to St. Louis and sit down and retire. Right. <laughs> so let's just show her how it feels to sit down. <laughs> right. And in this, in this uh, case, lay down and sit her down for a year. Mm -hmm. But somebody, before she falls, Tell Jimmy to come over here and go move that stone and don't let my baby hit her head. Mm -hmm. There was a boulder six inches from my head. Oh, get out. For real? Well, you can see it on the Robin Roberts interview. Yeah. I'm laying there. There's an interview that's 23 minutes long called After the Fall. Mm -hmm. I think it's on Hulu. And that interview is where you get all of the details. You actually see the Cape Buffalo. The only wow. thing you don't see is the lion because wow. he didn't eat me. Right. So, no, I, um, I don't know how to stay down. But somebody didn't want me to retire. No doubt. So I, um, I learned I have to be even better than I was. And I am. That's I incredible. assure you, darling, I am better than I was. That's if you, you have an experience like that and you don't come back better, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. When you look death in the face, you realize how precious life is. No doubt. And basically, you don't fuck around no more. Right. My life is now of service. It was before I fell, but now even more so. Even more hyper-focused. Absolutely. Now you know what the goal is, right? Absolutely. And that's amazing. That's and that's giving back to the next generation. Absolutely. And thank God you didn't, you're not retiring. Cause no. that, that would be, <laughs> that rid some really great talent. I'm far from retiring, okay. darling. I think I got, like I said in one interview, I got about 30 more summers left. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, so, okay. Let's talk about the, the walk of fame, St. Louis walk of fame. Um, how does it feel to have that? feels great. I'm blown away by it. It's like, you know, it's like a cherry on top of a very large cake. Right. Um, like I said, this is home. Um, Hollywood Walk of Fame, St. Louis Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. One made me, one made me, right. you know, one molded me, the other one is where, well, how am I saying that? This is home, this is where I went. Right. It's all the same. It's all the same glory. It's a hallelujah and it's a glory. It's triumph. It's Christmas morning. It's cotton candy and ice cream. Yep. You know, if you work hard, you will come to these kinds of feelings. I'm sitting on top of the world right now. Yeah. But I also know you can fall to the bottom. No doubt. And I was on top of the world when I got my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Four months later, I was on the ground of the Serengeti. So don't ever get it twisted. And don't ever get too big of a head. Whew. Stay humble. Shh. Or at big, least try to stay, stay humble. Stay humble. <laughs> well, you know me. Humble adjacent. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, so we do need to talk about something, okay? There, there's obviously uh, an elephant in the room that we need to talk about. Listen. Last time we sat down, okay, 
uh, you had some very uh, strong words about Kanye West. I know that you've had a little bit to say about Kanye West in your book. I'm sick of Kanye. Boom. I was sick of him before he did all this mess. I don't care what he's dealing with. Okay. Shut your f mouth. You go sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. All them kids that look up to his ass. Get, hey, Kanye, my name is Jennifer Lewis. I'm famous too. Not as famous as you. That does not excuse you from doing what you should be doing. Go get help. Your children are looking at you. You hush now. I know what pain you're going through. I went through it. Do it for your children. Mm. Do it for the next generation. They gave you everything. They listen to your music just because you consider yourself a genius, and a lot of people do. Van Gogh was a genius. And he cut his fucking ear off. Mm -hmm. You hush now and go get some help. Find me, call me. Let me help you. That baby's so sick. And I, I guess uh, I wanted to kind of circle back and just talk about that for just a minute. Listen, I was, um, people talked about that on the interview. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go into detail. So maybe they had every right to, because the boy is loved. The man is loved. Right. But the man also has a mental illness. He has been diagnosed. He knows it. His team asked me to have an audience with him. It never happened. Oh, really? Yeah. This was after the video? No, no, no. This was before the video. Oh, okay. Way before the video. Right on. When they discovered that he had been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows I'm an advocate for mental illness. Yeah. So I know how popular he is. And let's face it, he was acting out by saying I'm going DEFCON 5 or something on the Jews. Listen, you make statements like that, you can start a war. Right. So that's what had upset me. If you got something to say, then express to the people what it is. You just can't blab things out because too many people look up to him. Yeah. Has he got a zillion followers? Yeah. He's There's, got a lot of influence. Listen to me. There is a responsibility that comes when you have a platform like that. I have compassion for Kanye and everybody else in the world who's suffering from mental illness. Um, yeah, his team did ask me to have an audience with him and it, it never happened. Are you still down to have a conversation with him, have an oh, audience listen, with him? Listen to me. If I've got the time and the space to speak to anyone, mm -hmm and help them get help, what else I got to do? Right. I did it, it helped me. And the bottom line is when you have a platform, it is a responsibility. So that is what, I don't dislike him or hate him or any of that. Right. It's my responsibility to say, whoa, when I see my children acting out, yeah. I'm gonna say something. <laughs> I don't care what anybody thinks. No doubt. Hollywood's on to you, let's uh, go. My, <laughs> my job is to speak to where I see the next generation 
hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak to that. I was so proud of the millennials when they laid down on those college campuses when Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. when the kids came out in the streets during COVID with that whole George Floyd thing. I was so proud of all of you because you came together and you united. Mm -hmm. But when I see somebody rip that apart, I'm gonna say something. And I don't care what I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Are you insane? <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> no doubt. I'm, I'm 67 years old. Say what you wanna say. Right, right. I know who I am, and I say to you today, with what's going on in the world. You have one weapon and one weapon only. Know thyself. Absolutely. A gun ain't going to mean nothing. A knife ain't going to mean nothing. You loud talking ain't going to mean nothing. Mm -hmm. The choices you make to protect your family, the choices you make to be strong if someone you love falls, this is what you concern yourself with. Self-care. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Right. What choice are you making? So speaking of choices people are making, I wanted to hear your thoughts on this whole scandal, all the sexual assault allegations, these lawsuits that are coming after Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs. Mm. I'm curious about that because there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of conversations. People have been saying that Hollywood is, this is kind of showing the dark underbelly of Hollywood. Look, what are your thoughts me, on that? Let me just tell you this. Personally, I never saw the dark side of Hollywood because I wasn't looking for it. Gotcha. I had talent. Nobody came for me, you know, I didn't see it because okay. I wasn't looking for it. And I also came up in another generation. Mm -hmm. Does it exist? Absolutely. Is it sickening? Absolutely. The Me Too movement has brought it all out and it's in the open. And thank God, I don't know Diddy. Puff Daddy, I don't know anything about this. You've never, no, 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 you've no, never no. met him? I know who he is. I have met him. Okay. I met him at, um, I think, the Essence Awards, where I was there. Was I honored that year? Yes, I think I was honored that year. And I met him. I don't know him. What I do know, What do you know? Is that video yeah. that I saw of him grabbing her hair, throwing her down, stomping her, and literally throwing his leg back to kick Well, now, mm -hmm. that is madness. Yeah, that says that's, it all, right? No, that's sick. Mm. That's mental illness. That's all of it. I'm not here to judge anybody. But I know that that's wrong. Hateful, evil, sick. But more than all of that, sad because mm. somebody had to done it to him and then somebody had done it to whoever did it to him right these are patterns generational it, absolutely yeah um seeing anything like that is very disturbing but our job is to get him help and to get everybody help that we see 
assaulting children, assaulting women, assaulting men, assaulting boys. Yeah. It's not to hate these people, but to know that they're sick and to get them help. Mm -hmm. That's all it is to it. Yeah. Once again, we were not promised a rose garden without thorns. It's very true. You don't beat a woman like that. You don't beat anybody like that. Violence is unacceptable. Keep your hands to yourself. We don't right? get to do that. Yeah. We don't get to do that to each other. White, black, green, I don't care what you are. Mm. Yeah. You don't get to assault another person. No doubt. Be it physically, sexually, or any other kind of way. Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself, right? I mean, that's the way you say it. Yeah. Keep your damn hands to yourself. That's the All way right. you say it. <laughs> that's how I say it. <laughs> now, I know that there's a lot going on recently in with the election coming up, right? And I know you're very, very uh, vocal about your political stance, um, especially with everything that's going on right now, Biden versus Trump and all that. And of course, I just wanted to ask you a, a few questions about that real quick. As far as Biden, the Democrats have been very, very um, adamant about having him step down because of the last debate that he had, the recent debate that he had, okay? Let and I'm me, curious, let me what do you stop. think? Do you... Let me just stop. Okay. There. What are your thoughts? This election is not about Biden. It's not about Trump. So then what's it about? This election is about losing democracy. That's what this election is about. I don't... We are on the brink of losing democracy itself. I'm not going to go into details. I don't have to. Right on. Everybody knows what's going on. If we don't vote blue and come out in a landslide, we will lose democracy. It's, and that's the end of the story. Right. Now, I don't know if he's going to step down and somebody's going to step up or Trump's going to do this or Biden's going to do I don't know. I, that's too much. Yeah. But what I know is we're on the brink of losing democracy. So do your justice. Do what you will. I'm not going to get stressed out about it. Right. Mm-mm. I ain't paying no attention to none of that. Yeah, it's out of your hands. I will tell you a meditation I did not too long ago. I actually said out loud, God, please don't let Trump win. I said that out of my mouth. <laughs> and the answer came back to me in my meditation. Now, hear me. Please. Don't let Trump win. But what came back was, don't you let what you don't like about Trump win in you. Hmm. I'm not getting stressed out about this shit. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do my part, and that's what I'm asking you to do, right. is your part. Stand up where you are. Face the wind. Put an uncompromising foot forward and vote. We are on the brink of losing democracy. God help all of you if you don't know what that means. Read up on World War II. Read up on the Middle Passage. Read up on the Holocaust. If we lose democracy, you will never be able to vote again. 
you will be shot on sight without repercussions. It's called a totalitarian state. He will be king of the world, not just of the United States, because of the nuclear arsenal we have. Mm -hmm. They will tear up the Constitution. It will mean nothing. Freedom. Freedom? Shh. You get stopped by the police, they'll shoot you. That's it. That's the end of it. If he can have 10,000 uh, felons and become president of the United States, what kind of justice do you think you're going to get? That would be back alley abortions, mm. women's rights, voting rights, gay rights. It's over. Everything we worked for will be flushed down the toilet. Yeah. So I say to you, There are more of us than there are them. And here's my, the last political song I wrote. We've got the will to win. There are more of us than there are them. Standing side by side by side, we'll win it and win it by a landslide. This election ain't no joke. We got to take this bitch by the throat. <laughs> so repeat over and over and over again. Only love can win. Only love will win. We don't get to judge. That's wasted energy. So, once again, don't let what you don't like about them win in you. Right. What are you going to do, stress all day, every day? Because it's right there in front of you. Yeah. Trump this, Biden that, Trump this, Biden that, Trump this, Biden that. True. Our job is to go and do what Harriet told us to do. what King fought for us to do. Mm -hmm. Malcolm, vote. No matter care how old they are, what they look like, vote for democracy. Yeah. That's your job. End of story. You're right. Well, Jennifer, I appreciate you being here with me, sharing some time with me. I know that you, you got to run off and, and uh, I know you got a slew of other interviews going on here. But again, congratulations on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. I think that's amazing. I mean, it's, it's really dope. Um, of course, it's an honor to sit across from you again. Um, and uh, I look forward to talk to you again. I actually got to touch your feet. I feel kind of good now. <laughs> You know, yeah, my day's I'm, complete. I'm pretty, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm about, I would say 85 to 90% back yeah. from the fall. Um, I could have tied my own shoe, but I wanted you to do it. It's okay. <laughs> I was honored to do it. <laughs> when I don't have to tie my own shoe, why, why should somebody it? else tie it? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but again, sweetheart, thank you so much. Godspeed, baby. Talk to you soon, All okay? Right, be well. Yeah. All right. P A S C A L. You are now rocking with that dude Pascal. We be going wild.